Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is the walkthrough for our Republic Fortress Delta at the Empire Lug Display for Brick Fair Virginia 2024. This is a collaborative project between myself, my friend Daniel, and our friend Mason. And it is basically a Republic outpost or fortification with a heavily fortified wall and gunship hangar. We got an AV-7 cannon for artillery in the back and a lookout tower to keep watch for invading droids. Which, as you can tell, is what is currently happening. This is one of the earliest battles happening in the Clone Wars. As you can see, we are still using those Phase 1 Clone Troopers with the ranks from Geonosis, which are just amazing figures and I really love how they look. And we are also using the Trade Federation brown and tan colors before they switch their paint over to the Separatist blue and gray. So. That is basically the overview. It's a strong position that the Republic needs to hold in order to keep this planet. And obviously the Separatists don't want that to happen, so they are trying to take it down. So we're gonna have each builder kind of talk about their section. I started over here on the left with the gunship hangar and the bit of terrain in front. So I started with the river because this is one of the kind of first things that we talked about when we were coming up with the plan for this. The banks of the river are built with the snot technique, which helps to have a much more natural curve to all of the sides of the river, and that way it's not as blocky and it doesn't jump around as much. I think it turned out great. And then there are some rocks kind of along the banks of the river with that dark bluish gray color, and then it transitions to dark tan and medium nougat. And then the main terrain color for the outside of the base is that bright green with some regular green accents, which is just a really nice looking color contrast. And I think it really plays well with the dark tan and medium nougat. And then moving back, there's a little strip of rocks just going up right into that gunship hangar. This was probably the biggest section of my part of the collab. It was built in a few days right before I left for the show. It has a nice dark blue stray floor with some white details in there using the snot technique and obviously the gunship just sits right in the middle of that white box which I think just turned out really really nice and then for the walls I went for a pretty imperial look with those kind of lights and these strips going all the way up and I'm really happy with the panel technique that I used it's just so much more smooth than using regular slopes because you don't have that kind of bump in the middle of the slopes and I wanted to use lights in this hangar and because of the way that I was building the white lights, that just wasn't really able to light them up. So I added in a few lights kind of at the top, like spotlights, which I think turned out really nice. Actually, I'm very happy that I did that. I think it adds so much to just the top of the mock. And then another thing that I'm really happy with is that door that I just added in a little complete saga Easter egg with that mounting of the door. So I'm just really happy with this. And then also using Mason's gunship, the M5 builds gunship, and I lit up the cockpit, really looks nice on here. And then the last thing that I built for my section is this little rock pillar that kind of borders from the gunship hangar over into the wall. This was something I built the morning I left for the convention, but I'm really happy with how it came out. I think the techniques look really good and it just helps to blend the different sections of the mock together. All right, I'm Daniel, and I did the middle section of the mock here, so that's pretty much the main chunk of the wall with the doorway and then everything in front as well as behind of that. So starting right up here in the front, you can see we have more of the terrain. So over here we have the river, of course, with the snot water, and then also on the edges of the river we wanted to include some sort of accent color. We ended up going with dark orange. It's sort of supposed to represent the medium flesh and dark tan that you see on top, but obviously wet and it does really help everything pop, especially next to the blue of the river. And then right up on the edges of that, of course, we have the rock work. This was something that wasn't originally planned, but I'm really happy we did it. It adds a lot of depth to the mock, and it elevates it quite a bit, which makes everything look a little bit more imposing. And then on the right side of the bridge here, we have the droid forces, and with the droid forces, we have the AAT, which is designed by Lewis Kiwi, as well as these staps, which are designed by Two Bricks. And really, the way these are formed up, we wanted it to look like there's a whole army of droids kind of coming in, invading the wall. And then really, to talk about the wall here, this was one of the main components of the mock that we kind of honed in on when we were planning everything. For the design, I wanted to go with something that was 
kind of easy on your eyes, simple, but I didn't want to just do straight bricks, and that's that's sort of where I came up with this idea for the X that you see in the middle. It took quite a bit to try and get it right, but I ended up using these, I guess, double 45 degree slopes in each of the corners, as well as the edges to just make an interesting sci-fi looking shape, and I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. And then of course we also have these pillars jutting out of the sides and they use a bucket handle technique for a nice little detail in the middle there. And right in the doorway right here of course we have Ethan's fighter tank and then on the sides I wanted it to make it look like there's the I guess spikes for the door. Originally the plan was to make the door motorized but it didn't really end up working out but I do have lights in there and that's really cool seeing the lights shine down on the fighter tank especially when the mock is all darkened. So the way we have the figures set up here, we kind of almost wanted it to make it look like the droids was, I don't know if it was a sneak attack or what, but we have it so the fighter tank's just coming out, and then all the first wave of clones is coming with that, and you can see on the right side of the mock and on the left side, we even have a couple squads uh, running out from the bushes. And then if you move on over to the right edge of the wall, you can see it goes off at an angle which really helps to make the mock less square and more dynamic and this is actually the section Mason did so I'll go ahead and let him talk about what he's got going on here. Hi my name is Mason. For my part of the collab I built a Delta and a clone watchtower. I took a lot of inspiration from real life Deltas to really try to get a organic shape and something that looks realistic. A lot of the rocks I see are just inspired by where I live in Oregon. I continued Daniel's wall design uh, he sent me the studio file and I just built it with some parts and made some brick and to get that done. And then for the tower, I looked at the one that we see on Anaxis in Season 7 of The Clone Wars. I really wanted to get a consistent look and just kind of show a common architecture in the Republic. It is slightly different. I moved some bits around to make it look like it's from an earlier time. And I really try to keep the detail kind of minimal and simple. I wanted it to look pretty clean. I added some weathering to the dark red stripe and down below, but I didn't want to over detail it and have it look too dirty and complicated. The tower is 12 sided and I used cheese slopes which make it really easy to help line up and fill in gaps. It got harder as it went up and I ran out of time towards the top, but I used panels to help kind of fill in the gaps. I did tile underneath, I used T-bars and clips to connect it and hinge them in different ways to try to get a nice rounded look. The top part is a shallower arch than the bottom so we get a nice disc shape. At the back of the tower there's a little door. It was a little hard to work with since I had made some miscalculations in the tower but I wanted something smooth and look pretty nice. And there's a little control panel and some antennas and some grill tiles which create a nice look. And then just some other details like some uh, electrical box, panel, cabinet door. Then for the train, I had some help from a couple friends and we put this together at the convention. Just try to have nice thick foliage, get some different colors and variation in there so it looks realistic and there's different plants and forms in the train. All right, so moving on to the back side of the base or the interior, the first thing you'll notice is that AV7 cannon. This is another design by Mason that he built a few years ago so we were able to Give it another life and put it in the mock which looks really really nice and it is sitting on a little pad there that i actually built here at brick fair but this was a design that me and daniel came up with in 2021 for one of our past collabs so it was really nice to be able to give that another shot and it looks really nice still holds up so basically the way that this is set up is there's a main clone force being led out behind the tx-130 by a clone captain we got a bunch of clone troopers lined up there, and then to the right of that, there's a smaller squad being led by a sergeant, also ready to come out and face the droid force. And then we just got a couple crates scattered around. We also have a little transport speeder carrying more ammunition towards that cannon. And because of the little rock section that I built in the front, we had to continue the rocks going all into the back. So actually most of all of this was built here at Brick Fair during the private days before the public shows. And this is actually really nicely done here by Daniel. I did some of the top stuff at my house before I left and then he built this rock section that kind of nicely molds up and blends in with the little plateau there 
with some more of that medium nougat and dark tan. I actually really like how that came out. And it just adds in more depth and scale to the interior of the base. And then moving on to the other side of the AV-7 cannon, we can see a conversation going on between a commander and a lieutenant and a couple of his kind of squad. We tried to use the clones with backpacks with the lieutenants almost as like special units or something like that. Some guys that are cut above the rest. So everywhere that you see lieutenants, they are also surrounded by those plain white clones with backpacks. So I thought that was kind of a fun detail. And then we also have a little commander talking to some captains over on the other side of the cannon as well. Just kind of giving orders, a kind of game plan for this attack and how they're going to defend the base. So that just about wraps up this project. As you can tell, a lot of time and effort and planning went into it. None of us live in the same state. Mason is totally on the west coast. Daniel is in the east coast, but a little bit south and I'm on the northern east coast. So. To make a project like this in this scale with the different elevation changes and stuff like that and to have it all line up exactly right is definitely an undertaking but it's a fun challenge and me and Daniel have been doing this for just about five years at this point so it's something that we do pretty much every year and it's just a fun challenge. Seeing the final result and how it all comes out at the end is just so rewarding and I'm really happy and proud of this mod. So at this point, all I wanna say is thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're interested in either the gunship or the AV-7 or the TX-130, all of the instructions for those vehicles are available for purchase. So if you guys are interested in that, I'll have some links in the description. So with that all being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you all in the next video. Goodbye.